Hello everyone, I'm Dennis. I'm Andrew. We are the Crafty Lumberjacks. We're really excited to get crafty with you all today. Yes, thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you want, you can write where you're coming in from in the chat box. Dennis already wrote that. Uh, but we're so glad you're here today. And if you are crafting along with us, please let us know because we don't want to rush ahead, but you will notice with this class that there's a lot of information at first, but then once we start weaving, you're going to get the hang of it very, very quickly. Yes, in this class today, we are going to make our own loom from cardboard that you can reuse over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to be making a weave using sustainable materials. These are fabrics that we had laying around our house. You can use t-shirts, you can use so many different things for this, but they come out so cute. I also just wanted to uh, give a little warning. Our cat is going crazy today. So he just ran by. He's probably gonna be doing it back and forth. He's very uh, distracted with the birds <laughs> outside. So if you see him, his name is Teddy Kruger and he's a sweetheart. Yes, and then also at the end of the class, every class that we have with Fiskars, we actually have our next class coming up on July 11th yep. at 4 p.m. Um, we do an epic giveaway, and we're going to be doing a giveaway at the end of the class, so hang around so you can enter the giveaway. And I think that's it. We have people from San Antonio. Oh, love that river walk. Jamaica, New York. Shout oh, out. Nice. San Francisco, California, Burbank, Lawrenceville, Georgia, wow. oh, Chicago. All right. Well, we're back. We are, oh, Quebec, I have never been there. That's actually a place in Canada we really want to go. We're coming from Long Island today. We usually come from Queens, but this summer we've been kind of coming from Long Island and it's been really nice. Yeah, it has been. It has, yeah. So yes, we get to spread out a bit here. Yes, so I'm going to show you again what we're making today. You can make any size uh, you want, but we're going to be doing a smaller size just so we can fit it into the class today. This is a five by nine woven piece of artwork. Um, and it's super fun and easy. You're probably thinking, I've seen this before. I've done this before. A lot of people wrote into us saying they made it in art class. And that's actually where I got the idea from. I think it was a fourth grade. We made these in art and it's just such a wonderful throwback. We love to throw it back, especially during the summer because it just brings back all those feels. Mm -hmm. um, we have Texas in the house, a hundred degree heat. Oh, no Toronto. Ah, uh, I love it. All right, so should we get started? Yes, let's get started. Okay. Get started. <laughs> so we're gonna start with our loom and we're gonna be making that out of cardboard. And the first thing you want to do is cut out a piece of cardboard, a five by nine piece, five inches by nine inches. Yes, in today's giveaway, we're giving away two pairs of the new Fiskars Renew scissors. Yep. This is all made out of sustainable material. Everything you see here is uh, recycled. Yes, recycled. upcycled. Even this the screw, the handles, there's no dye. These are all the natural colors. I love these. They have such a nice feeling to them. I really love these scissors so much. Yes, and we're also giving away a Fiskars cutting mat and a Fiskars acrylic ruler. All staples that you need. Oh, I love First, this. I mean, we use these all the time for almost every craft we make. So it's a really great. Um, it's a really great gift. Tennessee, so, Lincoln, wow. Nebraska. Lincoln, I, we were, uh, we met on the national tour of Fiddler on the Roof and we actually performed in Lincoln. Yes. Uh, and I love that place. Uh, I had such a good weekend there. I actually found my first uh, t-shirt bag at like an upcycled uh, thrift oh. store in that downtown area there. I think we played at like a college. I always think of that pizza place. What is it? Um, Oh gosh, what is that movie? Uh, Godfather Pizza, I think it is. Was right? that there? I or? think so. I and think then so. there was a like a martini bar or well, something. Well, we could talk for hours. So Why great. don't we get started with the okay. loom yes, itself? Yes, and yes. then we can always chat as we go. Uh, do you mind switching over to the, there you go. Awesome. Thank you. So we're gonna start cutting our uh, loom here in our piece of cardboard. Like Andrew said, we wanna do a five by nine piece, but of course you can use any size that you like. I love to use the Fiskars mat and ruler because you don't have to do any math. Everything is there. You find an even edge there, line it up, and designers make, make it work. work. And we're doing five by nine. I have to say, I never do any of the cutting because, not because I'm bad at it, but I just feel like maybe you're a little better at it. But the mat really does help. It really does make everything so easy. So it is a great tool to use. All you have to do is line up the grid and it's simple. And yes. as you can and of see- of course I'm using a Fiskars craft blade here. I love those too. Yes, okay. one of our other favorite tools. You just kind of like butter. Like butter. So we're doing five by nine. So that's nine. And then I want to do five. And again, like Andrew said, you can make your loom any size. 
Uh, we love the mini one because just mini things are so cute. Mini things are And really if cute. you have like a small space, it's a great filler for like a gallery wall. Or if you have uh, children that are going to college for a dorm room, oh, that's or uh, if you work in an office and you have a little cubicle or a desk, yes. it is a perfect little colorful accessory that you can add to your space. I like that a lot. You know what's really great too? Are you cutting this right? I think you are. Okay. Yeah, five by nine. Yeah. Five by nine, yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I screwed him up. Um, you know, what I really love about this too, if you're thinking, if you have a lot of kids or if you're thinking of an activity for kids, what you can do is you can create the loom itself and then have the kids weave, do the weaving part. Because the, the making of the loom is, I think, kind of the trickiest part. Yes. You know. More uh, people from New York. Hello, Judy, Kathy, and Riley. I've never been to Caroline. Uh, do you want to do pencil or should I just free freestyle? Uh, let's do here. How about a pen? Just so it's right. like easier. Okay, so now that we've done, we cut our piece to five by nine. And again, if you're crafting with us, let us know. We're just going to cut, or we're just going to mark um, centimeters. Every centimeter, we're going to give a mark, and it should come out to 12 centimeters. Yeah, regardless um, of what size you're doing, you want to have an even number of spokes or teeth. Yes, that's important because we're going to tie off the weave at the end, and it's much easier to do when you have an even number versus an odd number. Yes, we have uh, D from Massachusetts, uh, Serena, Long Island. Hello, neighbor. Hello. hello. Uh, North Glen, Colorado. Uh, uh, another favorite place of mine. I love so that. again, I like to take my acrylic ruler here and she, again, math. I'm a great crafter, great artist, but math, I cannot do. Math so I cheated friend. and I'm going every little four nicks and just making a little mark. That's right. Um, but I just, I really do love this craft because there are so many things you can do with it. You can really create a pattern in your weave or you can make a rainbow ombre effect like we did, or you can create more of a color block making uh, stripes or something like that. So really there, the, possi the possibilities are endless, aren't they? They are. We actually did this with the Fiskars team uh, a week and a half ago. And they are not crafters. They are not crafters. <laughs> yes. No, they are not. Um, and they got really, really crafty. And the imagination that I saw with the colors, with the patterns, I was blown away. We always say that's our favorite part is when somebody who says they're not a crafter makes a craft and it, it's incredible. It, they always do it. They always surprise us. And then you want to repeat the same process on the opposite side. I have one part. I did four nicks. But um, this one has five. So whatever um, your, your counting is, you just want to make sure that it's lined up with the, yes. the side across from it. That's right. You just want it to be a parallel. OK, L Fig said, I'm sorry, what did I miss regarding the measurements? We are doing a five by nine piece of cardboard for our loom. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can make it any size you like. And then again, you want 12, <laughs> 12 markings on your loom. I like when you call it teeth. Teeth. Because we are going to cut, we are going to cut slits, and they really actually do look like teeth. And the trick with this um, is that you just want an even amount of <coughs> teeth. That's all. So if you have a bigger one, that's all right. You just want an even amount on the top and the bottom. And you're going to see we're going to make a loop, and it's going. We're going to string the. We're going to string the string. Is that right? Yeah, almost like a guitar. guitar. Yes, almost like a guitar. This is also one of those crafts where it might seem a little confusing at first, but then once you see it, you're going to be like, oh, that makes 100%. It's so funny. Andrew is like talking to you on the camera, but I know you're seeing. I know, things, I know. But he is just performing to the camera. Well, you know, when we were actually doing the Fiskars class with them, oh, yes, yes. both cameras were on, and I didn't realize until about midway. And I was like, did I do anything weird? And so right, I yeah. just decided I'm always going to mug for the camera no matter what. Now, if you're a little confused, I'm actually going to show you what the finished one looks like, just because I do think it's a little easier. This is actually what it's going to look like if you're feeling a little confused. OK, great. Awesome. So now that we have our markings, uh, we are just going to take our X-Acto knife or craft blade, whatever you like to call it, and we're just going to mark, uh, cut these little slits out. You don't have to be too careful or too perfect there. And you want to go about a half inch up. Yeah. And this is where we're going to string our loom together, like our strings of our guitar. And just you just want to make sure that you go all the way through and try to keep it as even as possible. 
you know, you don't want to go all the way up here and pull it down. You want right. it kind of an even row. But if you are doing this with kids, maybe let's say tweens or something like that, you could always use scissors instead to cut these marks if you want oh, to yeah, do a little absolutely. safer. Absolutely. And it really does not need to be 100% perfect. It is, this craft is extremely forgiving. So don't worry if your marks are not 100% perfect. Really, don't worry about it. Yes, do we have anybody crafting along with us or are you guys just hanging out? And now again, what I love about this is you can really customize and cater it to your color palette. You can even create your own uh, designs or images. You can make like a landscape. Dee said she's crafting with oh, us. Oh, great. Oh my God, oh my a gosh, lot of people crafting though. with us. That's great. Just watching you for now. That's all right. I love that. Yes. And actually this video will be posted on Michael's YouTube channel. Yes. So you can revisit it anytime if you want to go back and uh, kind of craft along with that video or if you miss a step or the measurements. Me you and know. my seven-year-old are crafting along. Oh my gosh. I love that. Because for us, crafting is so much about uh, the journey and not the outcome. Yes. And this is a really great craft where the beginning is a little tricky, like I said, and then once you really see how it goes, it really, you can be more mindless with it. So don't worry, the whole thing is not technical. Um, I also wanted to say, uh, because someone said they're taking notes, we do have a written um, tutorial on yes. our blog, craftylumberjacks.com. Uh, Holly actually shared the link. Oh, thank you, Holly. All right, so we're gonna just a give a great. second for everyone to uh, who is crafting with us to catch up. But as you can see, again, we have our teeth cut on the bottom and our teeth cut on the top, just like that. Now, we have to add like the brackets here. Yes. Like oh, here's the piece. So you want... Um... Thank you, Holly, she just shared it again. Let's see here. So now you just wanna take another piece of scrap cardboard mm -hmm. and you can either cut it the same size about uh, five inches long. Yep. And then I like to do just uh, you know a half inch of my ruler. And again, using the acrylic ruler, you can see everything and just kind of cheat it. Yes. So just follow that line. And I'm just making a thin little bar. And what this is creating is a little bumper that's going to lift the strings up so when you weave it's a lot easier to get your fabric through if not you don't really need these bars but it really just does um help everything uh while you're weaving it just uh brings up the the strings so it's it's nice and easy and it's really easy on your fingers and i do have to say it is unbelievable <laughs> it is unbelievable you know i was kind of waiting for you to say i know that. i can't believe Dennis I loves the pun and unfortunately, that's the only one I got for this. Part. Oh, no. You spent it in the first 10 minutes of the class. Um, can I unplug this? You can. Second? So then we're just going to hot glue the two bars right above the teeth. Yeah, and again, you don't have to be too perfect no. or too careful for this. You just want to make sure that there is space between the teeth and the bar. I think calling it a guitar or like saying it's similar to a guitar is a really great way to understand it. And actually, Andrew and I are in a production of Mamma Mia currently. <laughs> and in the production, Andrew plays the guitar. Oh my uh, God. The song from ABBA, Thank You for the Music. And Andrew learned how to play the song in less than a month. And he plays a guitar live on stage. And I haven't played it in almost two weeks. Oh gosh, and yeah. I'm not sure if I remember it. It, it will come back. It will come back. <laughs> it's actually not a touring show, sadly. We would love to take we would love oh, to do a tour. So fun. But um this one is on Long Island, uh, just at a theater on Long Island. Yes, and actually we have someone here watching from Long Island. Oh my gosh. Well, if you're close to Port <laughs> We'll be waiting for a sneak peek <laughs> at the end of the class. Yes. Oh. All right. So if you need us to slow down, let us know. But we are going to move ahead, and I'm happy to do that. Do you want me to take over this part? Yes, I do. All right. Here, I'm going to give you the camera. OK. So now we're just using some cotton string for this. And it's really easy to do. I'm going to start with some slack. And I'm going to start on the back, just at one of the ends of the teeth. It doesn't matter where you start, but we are going to go in order. So I'm just going to push 
this down. And the great thing about the cardboard is it really does hold this in very nicely. You could glue this end piece, but I actually don't think you need to, we've never done it. So now I'm just going to take this and bring it down to the bottom one and then weave it right across to the next row at the top, making sure that it's in the groove but not too tight where it's bending the cardboard, if that makes sense. And I'm just gonna continue to go down and around. As you can see, it really does look like a guitar or a harp. Ah, uh -huh, yes. And if your teeth get like that, that's okay. It really, it doesn't, our teeth have bent a little bit when we've made this before and it really doesn't, it really does stay held really well. So don't worry about it. Get into the groove. <laughs> Your love to me. And now we're almost up to starting to weave our fabric there. Yes. What I love about this project, I don't know if we said this, did we? But know. that you can really use any fabric for this. You can upcycle shirts jeans, denim, yes. uh, sweaters, you know, and actually the, the more texture your fabric has, um, I agree. The, the better your uh, weave will look, your wall hanging will look. Definitely. And you know, you could also use yarn or, th or like a, a chunky yarn, different types of yarn would look really great. All right, so this is our loom. Again, if you want to glue these strings or tape them, you can, but we've never had a problem. So I'm just gonna leave it down. I'm actually just gonna cut this one a little bit. So now we're gonna start cutting our strips of fabric. So you that cut that one so short. Oh, oh, I did. Oh, I did. Oh right. gosh. Okay, it's fine. Well, we'll see how it works. Very nice. Very thank, nice. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Dennis, you ready to cut some fabric? Sure. So now you want to start gathering and cutting your fabric. This is a great time to start thinking about um, your design, your pattern, yes. whether you want to. Uh, have it, you know, look like an ocean. So you have like dark blue on the bottom, oh, I love you that. know, and then like, uh, or I guess you could have like sand, ocean, oh, sunset, whatever. I'm just going to show these again. So as you can see, these were the ones we made before. Yeah, this one we tried to do like a little rainbow yep. motif there. Really, really pretty. So we and this have... one we didn't even really map out. We no, just kind of grabbed just... random scraps of fabric and it came out so cute. I know, I kind of love how they look. They're both different, but kind of similar. All right, so what we're gonna use for this is a rotary cutter and some fabric. Now, if you don't have a rotary cutter, you can use scissors for this. Of course, you really can. It, does, it doesn't matter what you use to cut them, but when you cut them, we wanna cut about, I don't know, we want them about half an inch thick. What do you think, Dennis? Yeah, half an inch, uh, inch thick, whatever you want. The you know, the thinner they are, the more you'll need. Yes. So if you just wanna kind of, get it done quickly. You can cut uh, large strips. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do some uh, small ones here. And as you can see, we actually have our fabric uh, folded and that makes it easier to cut. Just yeah, because you get a nice long strip, excuse me, it's not using a lot of pressure. There you go. And as you can see, then it cuts like this very nice long strip. And if you have any frayaways, don't worry. I actually think some of the frayaways actually <laughs> add to the look. But the great thing about a rotary cutter is you're not going to get that many frayaways. Yes, yeah, so it cuts very clean. Yeah. And now this is my mom was a crazy quilter. I think in the beginning of the class, you probably saw a lot of the quilts here behind us. Mm -hmm. So this, she has tons and tons of scrap fabric around the house. So we just pulled from that. We also have a shirt here that we've been using yeah. uh, that I like just because it gives us like a little bit of thicker texture. Yeah, someone asked, how long should these strips be? You know, we're, we're, I think the most we do is we go around twice, but that's up to you. You can make it as long or as short as you want. You at least want it to probably go once, like the full length of the loom. Right. But other than that, I think you're fine to cut it as long or as short as you want. Yes. Don't you love those answers? Those <laughs> right. questions? Yes. <laughs> it's not really an answer. Right. Yes. <laughs> And that's, I get that a lot from Andrew because he's a Libra. So I'll wow. ask a question and it, it really ends up being another question. I'm like, what would you like for dinner? 
well, and then it goes, I don't know, do you feel like anything? <laughs> I'm like, I asked you, bro. What do you want? <laughs> I want you to make the decision and, see, and I'll this, cook it. Yes, this is all like uh, frayed or. Yeah, and not even, but I'm still going to go for it and use it. Because again, it really doesn't matter. Yes, you don't see those edges, I think is what you're getting yes, to. Yes, yes. Right? So it doesn't have to be clean. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that's a great one too. If you're working with kids on the younger side and you want to make the loom and you want them to cut um, the fabric, a lot of Fistar's scissors, even the kid scissors can actually cut through fabric. I know this because I've done it before. Um, so you can have them cut. If you don't cut out perfect strips, that's a-okay. You want to show Teddy? There's our little craft assistant. Uh, He's in the basket. Teddy. Hi, Teddy. Say hi. That's Teddy Krueger. He's obsessed with the birds because they sit at the window and they taunt him. He's very cute. I think we have a couple questions coming in. Gotta get a rotary cutter. Yes, I love the rotary cutter. Yeah. It is so smooth and so easy to work with. Oh, and then Holly just put the link for the rotary cutter. That is a quilter's ruler. Yes. You know, it might be quilter's ruler, but we use this for all our crafting. We, really uh, we use this for uh, when we work with acrylic. We use this when we work with cardboard, when we work with paper, uh, felt. And they have it all at Michael's. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> I think we actually got the, the ruler, the rotary cutter, and the map maybe all in the fabric section. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we got the craft knife in the paper section. They have a lot of uh, it's stars. It's like a cloud. I like that. That's pretty. They have a lot of Fiskar sections, which is great. And so as you can see, you just want to just keep on cutting different um, shades of fabric, different textures of fabric, um, anything you have. Uh, and again, you could use yarn, chunky yarn. If you do use yarn, it is going to take a little longer. But once you start weaving, it is one of those mindless crafts where you can really put something on TV, binge watch as you weave, which is really great. Yes, but for this project, the more variety you have, uh, the better. I think so too. I you know, so with too. color, with texture. Yeah. You know, we don't have too many different textures. Like if we had like a fluffy sweater or something, that'd yes. be really cool. Uh, um, but we do have some, what is this? Oh, we have some like- uh, We have some like- uh, Almost like a lace. It's lace, like cotton yeah. lace, which we found uh, in Dennis's mom's quilting stuff. And we wove that in as well, as you can see, let me show this one. <laughs> you can see we just wove it in randomly and it really does add a beautiful texture to it. That's what we're looking for. Yes. Dennis Sorry, is like the cat the is being so cute. He's okay. like falling asleep. Poor Aww. baby. He's had a very exciting day. <laughs> he really has. All right. So okay, now it's almost time out. to start okay. weaving. Let me gather all our scraps here. And again, you know, while you're doing this, you want to think about your color palette and how you want your wall hanging to look. Yes. Dennis is definitely the type of person who likes to map everything out before he yeah, starts. Yeah, so I like to think ahead of time. You know, and I, I think that's a great idea. I actually, when we first did this, I drew it on a piece of paper, how I wanted it to look. And it kind of resembled it, it kind of didn't, but it gave me a format to like how I wanted it to be because I didn't want it to just be straight lines when I did it. I wanted to try to make it a little bit um, oceany in a sense. Right, right. So it kind of reminded me when I looked at the, <laughs> at the drawing to try to resemble that. Patty gave a tip. Oh, I thrift stores are another great avenue to find oh. beautiful textures close to nothing on prices. Yes, and I think now in today's world, the more we can reuse, repurpose, the better. Because yes. you know these people, they just keep putting out more and more and more and more stuff. That's which so is why true. shout out to Fiskars because again, these scissors are just as good as the OG uh, orange handle scissors. But again, all made out of entirely recyclable material. Yes, I love these. That's so true. Cool. Thrift stores are so great with fabrics, t-shirts. You really could get a pile of t-shirts for uh, That's a great tip. I love that. And again, don't forget to share your pro projects with us. Uh, tag Fiskars, tag us, Crafty Lumberjacks, tag Make It McMichaels. And I think there's another one there. Uh, oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> just tag Michaels? Sure, yeah. All right. All right, so you ready to start weaving? Yes. 
So am I, am I doing this? I think so. So you're not doing much of anything today. Oh, do you want me to do it? I'll do it. And then I guess, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> this wasn't prepared. Oh, I'll do it. Let me do it. I'll do it. Let's try to do like a little, like a sky pattern, like blues. Okay. On top. Blues on top. I like that. Uh, maybe then maybe like two. green or like then a, uh, like sky, sunset. So then maybe we go. Hmm. Into like pinks. Yes, yeah, so I can cut other fabric. Okay, want. yeah. I see oh, that just, uh, the Michaels team just shared uh, all the hashtags. Oh, thank you so much. D said she loves the kitty. Smith said we love our kitty. He's the best. If you follow us on social media, Crafty Lumberjacks, we post about Teddy <laughs> all more than we post about our crafting. We really, <laughs> really do. We need to probably get better at that. All right, so I'm going to start. I'm going to cut this. All right, you can cut that over there. I'm going to start this. So really, with weaving, it's just over, under, over, under. And, you know, there are a lot of tips. If you have some tips, I love that. You can share them. I think Dee was the one who shared the, um, thrift store. the thrift store tip, which I thought was so wonderful. But I'm just taking my fingers and I'm going over and under, over and under, like this. And if you are using a, um, if you are using, let's say some like chunky yarn or something, you could totally use one of those big, thick plastic needles. But I actually felt it was easier to do it with my fingers than threading the um, fabric with uh, a needle every time, just because we're using so many different colors. So what I'm gonna do, I did my first one, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail here. We are doing a bit of a cheat at the end, you're going to see. You can, of course, tuck this in, but because you never see the back, what we're going to do is we're just gonna hot glue all our pieces like this. It gives you a very similar look and it's much, much easier. But if you wanna go a more traditional route, you can be tucking everything in. So I'm gonna do a couple layers of this green and what I'm going to do is then, since I went over this time, I'm gonna go under and then do the opposite from what I did, if that makes sense. Now I wanna keep the top of this fabric to the front. So as you can see, I just turned the fabric like this. And I'm gonna to continue to go over under. You know, and if it's even too hard uh, to do with your fingers, you can make like a little tool with a, a, car, a piece of cardboard, just yes. a little like- uh, Almost like a needle, right? Yeah, yeah. And just kind of either take the fabric or tie the fabric and just kind of, you know, weave it through. Yes. But again, the trick here is just doing opposite. So That's you right. wanna, uh, you know, start going under and then the next one start going over. Yeah, so as you can see here, it's under, it's over on top. It's under on, sorry, it's over on the bottom, under on top, under at the bottom, over on top. And as you can see, you can see as you're weaving uh, the white thread. So you're the top. <laughs> you're yeah, the top. All right, we're on different you're verses. Um, so then what I'm going to do, you can leave it nice and loosey goosey like this, but we're going to push it down a bit. So I'm gonna take mine and I'm gonna scrunch it up. And yeah. as you can see, that gives you a really nice texture too. Sean is here. He said the loom looks awesome. Great recycling. Hey, crafties, I'm late. Sean uh, Hi, follows Sean. us on Instagram, yes, he does. and he is a proud recipient of a Fiskars uh, yes. package. He yes. was one of our winners one month. I'm forgetting. Welcome what back. Won. I think maybe it was the box maker or the gems. <laughs> We've done. Melody so says place a large safety pin on the ends to use to weave it. I love that tip. Melanie, that is a wonderful tip. I, you know, I never thought of that. That is a great tip. I think especially if you have younger kids and they're having trouble with their fingers, I mean, this is really great for dexterity, so I think this is great, but if they're having trouble, put the safety pin on for them, help them out. Did you cut that orange for me? Oh, Sean won the banner template. Oh, the banner template, that's Yes, great. that was from our, uh, you know, we do classes every month here with Michaels and Fiskars. Again, our next class is on July 11th. That's going to be a great one for the kiddos. We're going to create little um, uh, paper, toilet paper oh, animals. I, them. I know, they're, they're, they're so queens. cute. They're in Queens. I'm going to start incorporating this lace just once. This is going to be almost like the ripple of 
the wave. What is that white part of the wave called? Ripple sounds right. Ripple. A large eyed yarn needle would also work for weaving strips. Yes, yes, definitely. Again, I just thought because we're using so many different strips, it was just, well, I tried it once and it was taking me so long to thread the needle that I was just like, oh gosh. But if you're going to be doing a bigger one and you're going to use a lot of the same um, colors, I think those are great tips. Okay, so now I'm gonna start incorporating more blues. How are you like? Oh, are you doing like an ocean thing? It's gonna start with an ocean and then go up to the thing. Is that okay? Yeah, I love that. I like to start from the bottom of the loom. I guess you could start from the top. I don't see why not. But again, what I'm doing is I'm taking the fabric and I'm pushing it down. And as you can see, I'm doing this pretty quickly. You get the hang of it and you're just kind of in the zone. So it does go by pretty fast. And what you can do too is you can even leave more fabric, like, uh, you know, start to kind of add more dimension, uh, you know, kind of like push this down, but leave this up. Oh, yes, yes, type yes. Type of thing. So it's like a little uh, uneven. Yeah, I like that. I mean? Yes. Just so it's not all straight across. Right, right, right. Okay, I'm going to go like that. I'm going to do another one of these. You know, this is a great one too if you have friends that like to come over and you want to. Uh, have an activity. It's a really inexpensive activity and it's really easy to teach. So this would be a great one to have people bring over an old shirt and let's swap out scraps and let's get crafty. I mean, you could do this in a couple of hours. Yes, that's actually what we did with the Fiskars team. Yeah. They all brought in different types of fabric and then they all just kind of shared. Which is just- uh, We have great. another uh, safety pin hack here. Safety pins oh. work as well. Couldn't you use a crochet hook to help pull that lace through? Oh, yes, you absolutely I like that. could. Do we leave the tails out and glue at the end, Joseph asked. Yes, you do. So we're gonna do that all at the end. Now here's a good tip. While you work, you don't wanna pull it too much where this starts to get cinched in. So I'm really trying to uh, not have it too loose, but also not uh, be too tight because you will see your string start to cinch. So when you're going around your, your corners, try to think about that as well. Should I move to another color? Dennis is waving another I'm color. Like, okay, like, let's go. You've got a lot to do, bro. Oh my god. You've got a lot to do. Uh, Bet said you could also use ribbon. Bet, that is a great idea. Yes, again, this is such a great project because you can really use whatever you have. Yes. You can even use some rope in there, some twine. Oh yeah. I feel like the more random pieces and things that you find or have, the better it will look. I agree. Let us know in the, uh, the comments if you are the type of per person to keep a lot of craft supplies and then you struggle using them. Oh my God. I would say that is us. We have so many craft supplies. And sometimes I just, I forget about them and then I go buy more stuff, which yes, is and then not we're like, very we sustainable. Had this. Yes. Or it goes the other way. You get rid of something and then after holding on to it for seven years, and then the next three days week, later, yeah. you're like, oh my gosh, why did I get rid of that? I needed that. Literally our lives. But when we do, we do a purge probably once a year with our craft stuff, and we always try to donate it to an elementary school or a senior center or someone, some, someone or an organization that can actually really use it. So I'm going to show you here as I go around. Oh, so I don't want that. Oh, so found a trim bundle at Michael's. I love those trim bundles. They're so great. Oh, we actually just used a trim bundle, didn't we? Yeah, for our, we did yes. like a boho uh, like rag the, flat. Yes, and that, that was really great. Had a lot of fun trim. So, Collecting craft supplies is a separate hobby from actually using them. <laughs> That's what Sean said. I want to show you, uh, just as you can see how great these bars are, you can really see how much easier it is with these strings. Um, raise it really is making it a lot easier to use yeah and again if you have uh you know dexterity issues you can even do some more separation between the strings and you can add more bars you can yes. do like three bars just so it's really raised up and it's easy to kind of get the fabric in there definitely Lindsay said christmas material use as gifts oh gosh i love that Lindsay. you spoke our love language christmas <laughs> yes, Christmas. Um, I love that idea. I think this would be a real great one to do for any holiday. Halloween, another love language of ours. We just love the holidays. Yes, so I've much. been already having dreams about Halloween. Yes, I know. And I actually tried to get that large skeleton 
Oh, uh, the yeah. other day, but I missed it. I think everyone knows that large skeleton. But I'm sure Michael's is going to have a lot of Halloween oh, yeah, stuff. We, love, we always get like a little something from Michael's each year of their Halloween collection. Oh, yeah. We have to limit ourselves is the problem. So as you can see, Dennis kind of mentioned pushing down some areas and leaving some areas a little up. That's giving us a little bit of a curve here, if you can see it. I really like that. I think that's going to add a lot of I interest. Do another. I do. So again, as I'm adding new um, elements in, I'm just really trying to keep an eye out to make sure, okay, I went over on this string. So I'm gonna go under this string, just so it's the opposite. Remember, we just wanna go opposite um, each layer we go through. If, if that makes sense, or if it's a little confusing, I'm happy to try to explain it differently. Yeah, so we're trying to create like a little ocean and sky landscape here. Yes. So, so I think, yeah, I think the next one's going to be maybe the start of our sky. Uh-huh. Well, or what? So is it like a sunset? Because it wouldn't be blue again. No, it would be like the sunset. Okay, so you want like... Let's see, what do you think? Would it be a darker color, like a darker orange on the bottom, or would it be the lightest orange on the bottom? I think it would be... Maybe like pinks and purples at the top. Okay, yeah. Like I think it would be like... kind of like the lightest at the horizon, right? So then would it work? So I think like maybe like so the peach and then like this orange maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Mrs. No K said, way. I have a box of scrap fabric from when I was mask making for nursing homes in April 2020. Oh I've been trying to figure out a project to incorporate all these random scraps of clothing fabric that community members donated. Gosh, wow. isn't it so crazy to think back to that time? <sighs> it really is because it still feels like that time in a sense, but it also <laughs> yes. feels like 10 years ago, but also like yesterday. Yeah. It's very weird. We are in like the time war. We are. It's a sound. <laughs> time is fleeting. But how nice of you to make those masks. Right? I know. How so generous, generous of you. Thank you for doing that. That I love seeing like community come together during all of that. Yes, I think that was the highlight of everything. Community is strong. Okay, I'm gonna keep love on going. How it. am I doing, Dennis? Am doing I doing really well? All right. If we have any questions about us, about crafting, about this specific this craft, great about time to ask. materials, this is a great time to ask. Now, as you can see, I'm getting a little twisted here and I'm kind of contemplating if I wanna leave it or not, because I don't mind the twisties because they just add a little texture, especially when you push it in. So I'm actually gonna deliberately twist a little bit. I'm adding this new oh, element. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if I should be worried about this, or this decision, but here we go. Mindy asked, are you tucking the cut frayed edges under? Uh, not yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hot glue all of those edges at the end. This is a little bit of a, um, a shortcut. Uh, if you want, you could tuck them into each other. You could cut them and tuck them in just like as if you were doing a needle point or something like that. But I found that at the end, we can just glue them right to the uh, back and it's gonna look really, really nice. Oh gosh, I need to kind of hurry up, don't I? <laughs> yeah. And again, we're gonna be doing a giveaway at the end of the class. We ask a question. You can yes. of course do research, but we do ask that you send us your answers. You can either DM us on Instagram at Crafty Lumberjacks, yes. or you can even email your answers to us at uh, craftylumberjacks at gmail.com. Yep. Then once we kind of gather all your answers, we pick a winner at random, and then we'll contact you for your address, and then Fiskars team will send you your goodies. I like the twisting. I think it looks and there's really no, great. There's nothing, uh, you know, you're not subscribing to anything or anything no. like that. It's all just to get the um, answers. Yes, and you can, of course, Google these answers because that's what I did. I just always Google a question. So, and I will, I'm just gonna let this cat out of the bag, even if the answer isn't correct, because we actually had one, I think it was the Easter one, I asked about a chocolate bunny, where it originated from, and, and there were a lot, a lot of mixed reviews on that with the answers. And I just accepted everybody's answer as an answer. So even if it's wrong, we put you in the poll, in the pool. We would still like you to answer correctly. Yeah, uh, sure, why not? Don't just but, say, you know. Well, I know, don't, yeah, you can't just be like dinosaur when it has nothing to do with the dinosaur, but. Um, open the flow. 
get on the, oh wait, no, open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur. Uh, Bet said, can you weave one end in just to show how that looks? Sure. I did in my, I donated my extra material to our library for kids' classes. Love oh, that's that. great. Love that. Oh, iPad said, really like the twisted look on the orange. Yes, get that extra picture. Thank you, iPad. Yes, we always donate. We do like a lot of uh, donations to the local senior center. Mm -hmm. We've donated to schools. I'm going to take this little piece and I'm going to twist it in. What I like to do when I do it is I like to go almost like around and go in of itself. Can you see this? And then I'm almost going to like give it a little knot. And then what I can do is use my little mini Fiskar scissors which is part of this week's giveaway. Excuse my fingers. And then just give it a little cut. Now, of course, why did I show you on the t-shirt the one, which is the most bulky, but it is the easiest one to show. But you can see it there. If you don't like the look of the knot, you could do it on the other side after it's all cut, but you can see it's really um, pretty forgiving. Does that help a bit? Very cute. Oh my gosh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Dennis cut these pieces so thin. Oh my gosh, well, you were tucking and rolling. I know, I know. I'm, I'm just going to do a cat check. Okay, great. Hi, Teddy. Say hi. Poor sleepy boy. He's been watching the birds. We actually made this acrylic feeder too. <laughs> um, and he loves sitting here and watching. He doesn't want to miss one moment. We actually used our cricket. Um, He's so sleepy. Our cricket cutting mat for that because it was a lot of measuring. All right, everybody, I'm almost done. How are we doing on time? I think we're, we're doing good. Have... We're doing pretty good. Okay. Uh, you want to add a little more like uh, of the lace for some clouds? Yes. Let me just finish this color. Or we also have this string. Um, no. Um, the lace. I like the lace. Or actually, I'll take a, I'll take a piece of that string if you want. Oh, no. It's nice and thick. Okay. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I kind of, <coughs> kind of love how messy our table is. Sometimes I just feel like the messier the craft table, the more into it I am. You know, it just everything's at an arm's reach. Let me just show you these scissors in action here. These are the Renew scissors. They're new from Fiskars. Oh my gosh, like butter. Like butter. This is part of our giveaway here. Made out of all recyclable material, even the screw. So awesome. All right, everybody. I think in about three minutes, I will be done with the weaving. Cat TV, my boys have been crazy about our clear window feeder. Oh my gosh. And Holly just shared a link to the new Renew scissors. The new Renew, wait, new Renew, <laughs> yes, new Renew scissors. I'm actually gonna click that. I wanna see this. Yep, right on the Michaels website. They're currently on sale. Oh, love that. Okay, and I might call this done in just a moment. Oh, I'm gonna add in this. Jen said, hi, mine, I I hear mine. I, I'm so happy how it turned out. I wish I could show you. You can oh. uh, email us a picture. You can tag us on Instagram. Yes. We would love to see. We would. Do, 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 do. Okay. Okay. Unplug the... yeah. Should I do blue again? Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. I can uh, cut you another scrap. If you no, need. that's okay. I'm just going to use this purple again. And this is going to be my last piece. You know, if I was doing this, 
with no time restraints, I would push it down even more just because I really do like that look of the bunched up look. But because I want to make sure I have time for showing you how to finish this, I'm gonna um, kind of call it a day on this one. But as you can see, I mean, I did this in about, I don't know, 50, 20 minutes and how beautiful is that? So before I cut the, um, the strings off, I am gonna trim some of these because this is a little bit long. And again, look at those new Renew scissors, just cutting it like butter. Renee Stewart, is this my Renee Sanjo Stewart? I finally found you, Marquez's mom. Oh my gosh. She's a crafty one. You yes, she her, is. You should see her holiday um, backgrounds. I love those. All right, so what I'm going to do now that it's done, see, I probably would go up to the top, but that's all right. Yeah, but you can cheat it. I can cheat it for sure. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip it over. Now, this is probably the most stressful part because, you know, you think, oh my gosh, don't cut the strings. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the strings right down the middle. Let me move this one. So I'm gonna cut these. <laughs> Sorry, wrong Renee Stewart. I'm from Washington. Oh, that's okay. You know, I never met a Renee Stewart that I don't like. <laughs> yes. So I know. So I'm going to keep the top on the, the, the board, on the loom. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each bottom piece. I'm going to actually do them in pairs. So I'm going to go to the two pairs starting to the left. You can go from the right or the left. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to tie them together. So I'm going to pull them off the teeth. I'm just going to clear this off a little. And I'm going to tie them together like this and I'm going to double knot it and I did cut this remember when in the beginning of the class I cut that string really short and then it was like you put the string really short well I did now and I regret, regret it. it I do because I do like when I the strings you. are really I nice and long you. but that's all right so I'm going to continue to do that and again that's why you need to have your loom to be um with an even number of strings because you're pairing off the strings when you tie them so if you're not up to this point and you're crafting with us, don't feel like you need to rush. Again, this is on our website and this will be um, live in just a couple of days uh, on, on Michael's YouTube, YouTube, channel. YouTube channel. But I'm just tying them in pairs just so the loom doesn't fall apart. You might be thinking, oh my gosh, the whole thing's gonna unravel. It won't, don't worry. You know, and of course, on the bottom, you could add uh, more embellishments. You can add tassels. Yeah. You could add some beading. Uh, we kind of like the natural boho, like chic vibe of just the, the raw string. I really do like them. You could always even fray the string if you really mm -hmm. wanted to. It's already kind of fraying itself a little bit, but if you wanted, you could fray the whole thing. Now, if you're working with kids, and this might be a, a bit of a tricky step, but this is a step where an adult <laughs> can definitely come in and help. Lindsay said, what do you think about making a rug with this design. Oh my gosh. I think that would be time consuming, but I think it could. Yes, work. I was actually thinking these could be like little cat rugs oh for our cat. Oh my gosh. When in doubt, craft for your pets. Yes. And I am double knotting these. I don't know if I said that, but I am double knotting. Thank you again for all joining us today. Uh, we do these classes every month uh, and we always look forward to them uh, just because it's a nice escape from real life. I um, love doing you these know, classes. You know, so we just appreciate you all being here today. So thank you. It's so much fun. Our next one is gonna be geared more towards kids. We're making some confetti poppers, which we're really excited about. So as you can see, we have the fringe here. And then for the top, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a stick you could use a craft stick for this. You could use a popsicle stick, whatever you, you a want. Dowel. A dowel for sure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take off- Or if you were doing like a beach theme, you could use that, uh, what is that beach? Oh, like set? a beach wood. Yes, I've, I've never done a craft with that, but I've always wanted to. Yeah. The driftwood. Driftwood, drift yes, yes, yes. So I'm gonna carefully take these off. Crystal said they could be coasters. <gasps> yes, that would be so oh, cute. Oh, rug coasters. And this step you don't wanna, rush <laughs> as I rush, but you really don't want to rush it too much. 
it is pretty easy, but so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my, my stick and I'm going to put one string over the stick, one string under the stick, and then I'm going to tie it. Can you see with my hands? Uh, not really, but. And I do want the string to be kind of close to the edge of the yarn. The first one's always the trickiest one. Let's see. I'm just gonna tie it. And then, so again, one string over, one string under. Small tree branches, natural stick would be cool. Could be an awesome community class. I collaborate, uh, upcycle projects, everyone brings in an old shirt or textile, so you get a variety for a big tapestry. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. Again, you can really cater this to your needs. You can make this any size. We have a little bigger one here, which is so cute. We have a mini one there. This will be Teddy's bed. This will be our coaster. Thank you, Judy. Judy said, awesome project, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Hang around. We're going to be doing the giveaway very shortly. And again, we do ask you to send us your answers to the question uh, on, our, on our Instagram, Crafty Lumberjacks, where you can email your answer to craftylumberjacks at gmail.com. Uh, it usually takes about two days when people roll in the answers, and then we'll pick a, a winner at random. Yep. Uh, we'll never ask you for any other information, you know, just your address. Yep. Just so uh, if you win, you won't hear from us if you don't win. Only if you do win. Right? That's correct. Elaine said, would it be easier to keep the weaving in place if you glued the ends before messing with the stick on top? Hmm. How do you mean? Like, uh, gluing the ends. Oh, gluing the ends. You know, I think that would actually work. I think that would work well as well. I'm trying to remember, did we do that before? I think this is the way we've done it, but I think <coughs> that would actually work really well. Renee said, I missed the first half. Did you show how to make the loom? Yes, we did. And this video will be on uh, Michael's YouTube channel in about two days. And we also have all the instructions on our blog, craftylumberjacks.com of the whole project. It's really easy. You just want to cut down a piece of cardboard, make teeth, you almost kind of create a little guitar or heart. So I'm going to start adding some glue and I'm just pulling yeah, or so just right around, around. Yep. This the is back. the back side of the loom and I'll check my work as I go. And I'm just going to make sure that everything's all right. And I'm just going to tuck these in to the back. Now, again, you could tuck them in manually with just a little uh, crochet hook, like someone said, or um, like that. But I just think since you're not going to see the back of this, I always like an easy way to do something. Yes. And I think this also like guarantees that it will That's right. fall apart or, yeah, you know, get messed up. Of course, you could use fabric glue or something like that, but hot glue has instant results, which I'm always, I'm always happy about. Let's check this side. How does this look? Oh, oh my gosh, cute. so cute. Okay, let me do this other side. How are we doing on time? Because we do need great. to give this question before the time runs out. Thank you, Dennis. I don't think I've ever seen Andrew craft this fast. Oh my gosh. Andrew man. likes to take his I time really... when crafting. I'm someone that just wants to get it done. I don't, I wanna take my time. I want it to be perfect. So this is a little tricky for me. I will be honest. I don't like things to be this chaotic. However, that's all right. I'm having a good time. So what I would do if I wasn't in a rush, I would cut all these down just so it would lay a little flat, a little more flat, excuse me. And I'm just going to check to see if I need to tie it in. Again, you don't want to push everything too tight so it cinches, but look how cute that is. I'm not going to show you this next step because we are really out of time. But what I did was I trimmed off the top I of think these. I have time for that if you want to, or you don't want to rush. 
I don't want to rush. Okay, okay. Yeah, we only have four minutes. Well, I guess I can. So I'm going to trim these off. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to tie just. Oh my God, Elaine said, oh, how about a chopstick for the top? That would be great. Yes, because, because we, we know have so yes, many. You have it in your cabinets, in your drawers, everywhere. You never know when to use them. <clears throat> now, That's perfect. I also like to take a little bit of glue to the back side and just glue these strings down. That way to ensure that it's not going anywhere. There you go. And I would actually even push these down to the back. I'm going to show you on this one. As you can okay, see, I just push these down the to them. Loom. So again, now our loom is still intact. We can use this for another unbelievable craft project. Yep, and I just glued these down just so it looks nice and clean in the front. And then I just tied a piece of string um, like that. All right, so as I finish this cutie up, let me, I'm gonna give the question. I'm gonna give the question. Or is Jessica everyone ready? Said, thank you, Elaine said, this is my first time here. Y'all are so much fun. Uh, thank, thank you, Elaine. You, Elaine. We're a little chaotic and but we're <laughs> yes. always having a good time. Um, thank you so much. I learned a new craft. Also can't thank you enough for the Zoom classes because I'm in a wheelchair and can't always get out. Oh, well, it's great that you're here and we're happy to be here. You know, we don't get out very much these days. So this is <laughs> yeah, just so. as wonderful for us. We're so glad you are here. Now, okay, the question is. Okay, you want to bring it back up to the top? All right, do you want to yes. the main camera? Hello, Hi. here we are. All right, so we have, oh my gosh, we have three minutes for this okay, question. Okay, let's just show off how cute. So these are all our different unbelievable wall hangings that we created. Here we go, this is the one we made today. <gasps> okay, okay, it's pretty cute. Oh, I would glue this, I would glue that, I would glue that. So cute. Dennis has given me notes on this already. <laughs> uh, okay, and for the giveaway, you are going to win a pair of the new Renew scissors and the micro scissors. Where are those? The micro tip Renew scissors. Yeah, both of these. And you're also going to get a Fiskars mat, cutting mat, and a clear ruler an acrylic clear ruler. This is so great. Okay, the question and again, is- email us your answers or DM us your answers at craftylumberjacks.com or craftylumberjacks across social media. Yes, all right, the question is, who invented the power loom? Who invented the power loom? You could also look up mechanical loom. Uh, that's it. That's the question. I literally Googled it. So that's what you should do too. You should just go search it, send us the answer. You will be entered to win all these wonderful things. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I think these came out so cute. Again, if you make these, please tag us, tag Michaels, tag Fiskars, use the hashtag make it with Michaels. And we hope to see you for our next class here on July 11th at 4 p.m. Thank nice. you so much, everybody. Have a great week. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye -bye.